You know, the more you f around, the more you find out. Hey, what is up society? It is your favorite wannabe influencer, Koi, and welcome back to another video. Y'all already know if you're right, that's how I'm gonna be reading more crazy Reddit stories. No theme today, guys, because I just wanna do what the heck I wanna do. So if you guys wanna see me read Reddit stories, then keep on watching. Let's get into the video. KKK, you guys already know the dealio. Gafas is on because your mama is blind, but I'll try my best not to look into the camera when I got my glasses on, guys, and sorry for the glare into the very first story. Am I the asshole for not wanting my boyfriend to spend time with their parents? Me and my boyfriend are both in a stable relationship. Besides from work and not making us being able to spend that much time together, everything is very good. In about two days is our anniversary. Also, in about two days is the Super Bowl. He's not really a big fan, but his dad is, and they have always watched it together as a family tradition. I said to him that I wanted to spend the whole day together with him since we don't spend that much time and it is a special occasion as a couple, but he refused, saying that his dad probably expects him to be there for the Super Bowl. He told me that he could spend about five hours together, which for me and for the occasion is not enough. But I also don't think he's really putting me in a spot I deserve as his partner. But I also don't want to end a streak of family tradition. Am I the asshole? What y'all think the vote for this one is? I'm gonna tell you, asshole. Oh, <laughs> I don't really know, cause like anniversary Super Bowl. Don't get me wrong, the Super Bowl only comes around every once every couple months. However, yeah, once a year. But so does your anniversary. And if this is your anniversary, doesn't the Super Bowl fall on the same day every year? I don't know anything about sports. Y'all correct me in the comments. But if it does, is this what it's gonna always be? What if you want to plan a trip? Listen, I understand that tradition is 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 tradition and you want to spend time with your daddy and you want to have a good time, but like I mean, if this falls around our anniversary all the time, what they expect y'all to do? Just not have an anniversary XYZ. And I understand that the Super Bowl is a Super Bowl and it's so important, but it's like your daddy ain't got no friends, he ain't got no siblings, he can't watch it with the dudes at the bar. Like why he why you have to be there? And if y'all anniversary falls around the same time as the Super Bowl every year, this is me assuming that Super Bowl is around the same time every year. When does it stop? When's the cutoff? When does your tradition stop trumping your relationship? I don't believe that you're the asshole. I'm so sorry. I'm gonna have to go ahead and say not the asshole in this one, y'all, because I just don't think it's anything wrong with you wanting to spend the whole day with your partner to celebrate your anniversary. Because it could start off with y'all just doing cute little gifts and then y'all going to dinner or go to lunch and then y'all, you know... What I'm saying? I'm gonna go not the asshole on here. Um, at the same time, I'm not gonna say that your boyfriend is the asshole if he wants to go spend time with, you know, his family this one time, but like making this a habit is not gonna be a thing. I'm so freaking sorry. I don't think that you're the asshole. Everybody in here, they can go ahead and go themselves. You know what I'm saying? For saying that you are. Y'all let me know in the comments. Um, but yeah, Reddit, y'all wrong, sorry. Next freaking story. Am I the asshole for telling my mom she can't live with me? This is not this person's first language, y'all, so their grammar and stuff is really off, so if I slip up, my bad. For context, I'm Filipino-American, reaching his 30s soon. I lived with my mom for like ever. I moved out back in 2020 because I wanted to experience having my own life, etc. period. A year later, I moved back in at my mom's house so I could save up for my own place. My sister has moved out since 2019 and never moved back. Got herself a house and I was led to take care of mom. Not her fault. She deserved to live her own life. Now, I want it to be my turn. My sister and her boyfriend agreed to let my mom live with them. I told her I'm done being our mom's caretaker and it's her turn. They're happy to do so, but of course, with some rules. My mom's ignorant. Oh, she doesn't listen to me or my sister. But now she's regretting it for listening to her friends because it's caused her to file bankruptcy. I will admit... I do think my mom is a narcissist, and if it doesn't benefit her, she would not care how it will affect me or my sister. Ooh. We grew up in chaos and with my mom's hoarding. Oh. She just takes whatever free stuff she can get, and I'd end up having a panic attack because space becomes scarce due to her hoarding and shopaholic tendencies. 
Ooh. I used to watch that show, Extreme Hoarders or whatever, Extreme Hoarding, whatever it was. Man, dude, depending on how bad. And then I know people who have like a bad hoarding problem. And it's like, dude, it can get bad. Like, personally, I would not move a hoarder into my house. I'm just not going to do it. I'm just going to be completely honest with you. I just won't. Because all that means is that you're going to be transferring your filth into my home. And I can't have that. Okay. And also not saying that necessarily if you hoard stuff that you're necessarily dirty. But it's like, it's very hard to keep a hoarding house clean. You know what I'm saying? During my senior year of high school, I asked her to buy me some socks for a school event after her shift, which was around 11.30 p.m. And she got into a car accident. Since then, she's always has blamed me because I asked her to buy me a pair of socks. Her life went to shit after that, she said. Anyways, fast forward, I decided I needed to move out and have my own life. I pleaded with her to move in with my sister, but she lives one hour away. I still wanted to stay in the area, but again, I want my own space without her. Ever since, she keeps making me feel bad that I don't want her with me. She also doesn't want to stay at my sister's because it's an hour commute for her and work, and she's 63 and scared to drive on the highway at night. Hey, I, 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 I agree with that. Old people shouldn't be on the highway, period, to be completely honest, to be honest with you, baby. Okay? Because sometimes you don't know how to stay in the right lane. Um, and definitely at night. Old people are already bad drivers in the daytime. The sun can be beaming, baby, and they still terrible drivers at night on the highway. Yeah. My sister offered to help her find a new job closer to her house, but she wouldn't budge because it's an easy job and she's making decent money for her age. We told her that she doesn't even need to work that much and that she can work twice a week. We will pay all the bills and she can get her retirement money or work a side gig for her own expense. She's 63? Baby! Assuming that, that that mama is, you know, you know, she all straight and good with her pension and stuff. 63, the retirement age in the U.S. is, is 64. 64, 65. Mama girl, you can get it. You, you know what I'm saying? You can, you can dip. You don't need to work, girl. You let them pay them bills. Especially if they pay them bills. Come on. Again, she wouldn't budge because she doesn't want to be told what to do. I told her I can't make my future plans around anyone anymore but my own. If we had a better relationship, it would be a different story. But she's suffocating me again. She still makes me feel bad and makes side comments. I told her that she can stay with me maybe once or twice a week. But I also warned her I might get in trouble depending on where I'm renting. I don't want her on the lease because it'll give her power to stay with me. So here I am telling her every day she cannot live with me and we are not moving in together. If she ends up being homeless because of her stubbornness, is that my problem? Am I the asshole? First thing first, let me just say, this person, obviously, English is not their first language because, baby, what do y'all think the, the vote is on this one? Um, vote is not the asshole. Um, I'm on a fence. I'm on a fence. I'm on a fence. A little, a little, a little, a little, a little, a little. Please forgive me, y'all. I'm a Libra. <laughs> I have to wait until see all angles. Um, but... The weird thing is that you moved out in, in 2020. Your sister moved out in 2019. You moved out a year later. Then you moved back in, it seems like. A year later, you said a year later, you moved back in with your mom and now for you to save money. So now you're trying to move out again, which 2020 was COVID and all that stuff was going on. So I, I, a lot of people had to move back in with their parents. It's kind of bogus because it's like, your mom let you move back in with her when you were struggling and now she's filing for bankruptcy and she needs to move in with someone. But you're not letting her and so if you didn't list all these other things about her that she's narcissistic she doesn't listen to y'all she's stuck in her ways which a lot of old people are she's a hoarder she makes you feel some type of way it's like i would say that you're not the asshole for having reservations for her not wanting to live with you um but at the same time, if you moved back in with your mom, which I get that your mom, you know, as a parent, they're supposed to be there. But once you grown there, you're no longer their responsibility. So she really could have not let you move back in with her. I would tell you to let her live with you temporarily just because she let you move back in with her. But you have to give mama a time limit. Like, mom, you got to have you got two months to move out of here. And then she has to follow set X, Y rules. Right. So. If she doesn't follow the rules of you of you letting her live with you temporarily, then she's going to have to go. Okay. <laughs>
Next story. All right, guys, story number three, moving right along. Am I the asshole for upstaging the bride with an outfit that was approved prior to the wedding? Ooh. Ooh, yeah, I've been having such reservations when it comes down to uh, weddings because they be. I don't think there's really, I don't want to say that I don't believe that there's no such thing as a bride sitter, but I do believe that if it's her day, I let her have it. You know what I'm saying? Within reason. It was my first Western wedding. Oh, what race is you? So I was careful about avoiding any cultural gaffe which means basically like embarrassing yourself or, you know, doing unintentional stuff. I'm friends with the groom and I asked him for the dress code. It was dressing up to the nines in neutrals and pastels. Oh, okay. So you must be fancy, period. I have this lovely sari that fit the bill. So this person must be Indian because the sari, I looked it up. It's one of them things like the, the, I forgot what it's called, like the kind of like, not the shawl, but the thing that kind of goes over the Indian's, per, like, or Indian's person, it goes over like their whole body kind of like drapes down. Um, so yeah, they must be Indian or something. I sent him a picture and he said, it's perfect. Five months before the wedding, I met the bride with many other groom friends at a bar. I showed her a picture of the sari, which they might have a picture on. I showed her a picture of the sari to ask her if it was appropriate. I also told her I'm happy to buy a new outfit if it wasn't. So whatever she says, we'll go. She said it was delightful and she'd be glad to have some culture added to her wedding pictures. Okay. The day arrives. Friends stayed in the back for the ceremony. So there weren't many eyes on me. For the reception, the bride changed into a gown that could be best described as grayish white. It was the same fabric as my outfit. Oh. The majority and outer layer of her gown was still white. Only the embroidery was the same color as the sari, and the underneath fabric had a hint of the same gray as mine, thus making it grayish. The groom, his mother, and our friends complimented me for how nice I looked. The groom's mother especially loved it as she kept coming up to me complimenting me more. She's half Indian and was brought up in the country. She too had worn a sari for the special day, and seeing someone else in it seemed to be sentimental for her. The bride and her bridesmaids, though, were a different ball game. The bride gave me a stank eye. Ooh. A bride maid tried to spill her drink on me? Another commented if my outfit was going to turn out white in the pictures. When we showed up to get group pictures done, I thoughtlessly ended up standing next to the couple. The bride made moves so that I ended up at the very corner by the time the photographer started clicking. As we stood in the group for the bouquet throwing thingy, the maid of honor asked if I was going to try to catch it, like I haven't gotten enough attention for the day. On our way back, I asked my friends if my behavior or our outfit was inappropriate. They didn't think anything of it. So y'all guys can probably see, I probably put up there already the picture of the sari. And girl, what is wrong with you? Like, this is one thing that's really weird. Western, I think Western means the US. I might be slow, y'all, who knows? I don't wanna say that like American weddings are like, let me take this off, that American weddings are like basic or anything. I don't wanna say that. But I do wanna say like, I found in other cultures with weddings, especially like Nigerian weddings and stuff like that, that it don't matter what you dress like to the wedding because you'll never upstage the bride, like ever. I just find it interesting how like in American weddings, you find that a lot of brides ask their guests not to do too much because they don't want the attention to be taken away from them. But step your bread up, baby, like step your game up. Like, you know, you know, sauce it up. Like don't go in there in there some floor length, basic, white, no extra, not saying that your wedding isn't gonna be about you, but if you're afraid of people stepping up, you know, make sure there's nothing for them to step up to. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not gonna tell my guests to dress down because baby, there's gonna be no way you're outshining me, Bookie. Like, I'm the fashion queen. Like, I, I, what, hello? So no, I'm gonna say not the asshole. This bride is being really weird because I'm guessing she just thought, oh, this is a little baby thing. Ain't nobody gonna really be worried about that, X, Y, Z. And then you show up and people are complimenting your stuff and then now all of a sudden she got a problem. And you know what I find interesting? How didn't you think that an Indian woman showing up in some traditional Indian attire to your wedding would be sentimental to your husband's mother when she's half Indian? Girls, if anything, you should have been wearing that. 
No, I'm saying like you're entering into this family and you know when you marry someone, you marry their family. So if you know his mom is half Indian, why wouldn't you wear something like that for a wedding? If you were so worried about Miss Thang upstaging you, you know what I'm saying? Like that didn't just come out of nowhere. Like you was already jealous of her. You just didn't want to seem like he was being a Yeah, that was weird. Next story. Am I the asshole for not wanting my brother's engagement mentioned in my father's speech at my wedding? Why is other people's engagements getting mentioned at the wedding? And I got a tidbit about engagements at weddings, maybe. But I'll get into that in a second. I, 22 female, am getting married in July this year. My brother, 26 male, and his girlfriend are going on a trip to Greece the month before the wedding. My brother wants to propose to his girlfriend while in Greece, which I'm okay with because it's not at my wedding, period. People who propose at weddings? You, I told my best friend, I told her, whoever should have them get married and if whatever, none of them make me the maid of honor, even if they don't. If I catch them trying to get down on one knee at my girl's wedding, oh, I'm turning up. They're gonna have to remove me from the premises. I'm telling you right now. However, my father wants to use his speech at my wedding to mention their engagement because it is one of the positive things that will have happened this year. Daddy, what does you own? They're getting engaged. He's gonna propose to her in Greece a month before the wedding. If y'all gonna have an engagement party for these months, a week before or a month, uh, two weeks before her wedding, why do you need to bring up somebody else's stuff at her wedding? You're weird. Who waits for a whole year, to, a whole month to congratulate somebody? You know what? Whatever. I told him I did not want their engagement mentioned at my wedding and would like the focus to be on me and my fiance, period. He told me that it's selfish and I'm basically the reason my brother is not engaged yet because of my own engagement. My brother apparently waited to not take attention away from me. Really, nobody's holding you back. Like, what is he talking about? Nobody is holding you back. What is going on here? What's the ages and who's the, the baby of the family? That's my next question. But he himself has never brought that up to me. So you never, why would it matter? He decided not to propose to his girl for his own stuff. That ain't got nothing to do with me. If my fiance wants to propose to me, he can propose to me. Ain't nobody holding him back from proposing. Who does that? Like, what? Cause he didn't want to upstage me or take the attention away from me. Okay, I got engaged. Boom. Next day, move on. Next person. Like, come on. What are you talking about? Again, I am fine with them getting engaged before the wedding, and even think it's a perfect opportunity to get engaged. I just don't want the engagement mentioned in my father's speech. So, am I the asshole? No. Daddy is weird. Daddy is weird. Daddy is weird. What else are you gonna mention at the party? Your promotion at work. You retiring? This is supposed to be about them. What are you doing? And as a matter of fact, just because daddy mentioned that and he kind of trying to hang on to it, I will tell him if you plan on pulling that shit at my wedding, you're not invited. You know, the more you around, the more you find out, okay? All right, guys, that is it for this freaking video. I hope that you guys enjoyed. These stories are a little short and sweet, nothing too crazy. You guys always comment down below what your opinions are, what you guys think, what you feel, what you're saying, what you're doing. Let's do it. I love you guys so, so much. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you're new. Hi, I'm Koi. Come join the society. And also hit that bell notification. Love you guys. Bye.